Hey everybody, it's Quincy from All Ears and I'm here at Disney's Coronado Springs Resort with a brand new video. We are doing a full resort tour staying in Grand Destino Tower. We're going to check out the rooms, check out the food, the shopping, the whole layout, everything. I'm super excited. I hope you are too. Let's get going. <laughs> Coronado Springs Resort is a moderate resort that opened in 1997. The whole resort has 1,917 rooms and suites in the three villages and an additional 545 rooms in the 15-story Grand Destino Tower, which is where I am right now, and in my opinion is one of the prettiest buildings in all of Disney World. Coronado Springs is also a convention hotel, so it's got a huge convention center that we'll check out later. And Goofy and Donald are here doing some business, it looks like. Oh my gosh, I have to go say hi. Hi Goofy, hi Donald. How are you guys doing? Good? <laughs> yeah, I know, you're always cool, Donald. <laughs> well, I just wanted to say hi, you guys. <laughs> have a good day. Thank have fun hanging out at Coronado Springs, thank you. Okay, sorry, I got distracted by Goofy and Donald, but who wouldn't? Donald is my favorite member of the Fab Five. Um, and that's the correct answer. I love Mickey, but Donald's my fave. Anyway, back to it. Um, the theming at this resort is inspired by a blend of Spanish, Mexican, and Southwest American uh, influences. Grand Estino Tower, though, is distinctly Spanish and is actually inspired by the works of Salvador Dali, which is why it's got such beautiful, amazing, unique architecture in here. Here is where you will arrive. The hotel is located in the Animal Kingdom area, but it's kind of central in the middle of Walt Disney World. And if you're parking, you'll have to pay that moderate parking fee of uh, $20 per night. And there is a valet option as well if you'd be interested in that. We will of course check out more of the hotel on our full resort tour, but for right now, I use the mobile check-in feature and my room is actually ready. So we can go ahead and head up and check out a Grand Destino Tower. Coronado Springs room. That online check-in feature is available on the My Disney Experience app or the Disney website. Once you have booked your stay, you can enter all your check-in details online and that way you'll get a text or a notification when you arrive at the resort and be able to head straight to your room number once it's ready. Now, if that doesn't sound great to you, you can always step in at the front desk just like always and get a key card if you need it. And of course, if there are any issues, you can check with a cast member too. The Coronado Springs elevators are super fancy. You basically tap what floor you wanna to go to. Our room is on floor six, and then it'll tell you which elevator to use. Ours says C, fancy elevator, made to the sixth floor. <laughs> As a note, check-in is at 3 p.m. and you can request an early check-in, although it is not guaranteed. Um, I actually, my room was ready at 1 p.m. today, so I did get a little bit of an early check-in. And it looks like my room isn't too far from the elevator. Big plus. All right, just like every, at every Disney hotel, you can use your magic band, phone, or a regular key card to get to your hotel room. I have my magic band, and I'm in. Ooh. All right, I made it to my Coronado Springs room in Grand Estino Tower. I am super excited to have a look around and I'm excited to show you everything that this room has to offer. So without further ado, room tour time. Actually, I'm sorry, I have one further ado. Um, I didn't have any hats, but you remember how I said this hotel is inspired by Salvador Dali? Let's check out the room on Salvador Dali. Let's take a look around. We're not off to a great start because I haven't even started yet and my mustache is coming off. So the first thing that I noticed walking into a Coronado Springs room is that it is big. There's a lot of space here in the entryway. There's a lot of space heading into the room. It does not feel cramped at all like some other places I've stayed can feel a little bit cramped. There is a lot, a lot of room. And I'm seeing some beautiful, pretty beautiful furnishings already. So your door has your standard Disney locking mechanisms, light switches over here. There's a peephole. Oh my gosh. Look, you can see into the hallway with my camera. Whoa. Crazy. So that's good, I guess. <laughs> There's also a connecting door here on the left. So Coronado Springs does offer connecting rooms if that's something that you're interested in. You can designate that when you're making your booking and in if you need to, you can call guest services as well. So that is an option if you're looking for a connecting room. Obviously I'm here by myself, so that is gonna stay locked. 
I don't know who's over there. I don't want to bother them. Your bathroom is going to be on the right as you come in. And I see a gorgeous shower. We will definitely go give a full exploration there in a minute. And there's this huge Spanish barn door situation going on. Um, slides pretty easy though. Not difficult to close. And it looks pretty nice open or closed. Next stop on Salvador Dali's room tour is this giant wardrobe. Takes up a good amount of space, but there is no built-in closet here. So you've got this wardrobe situation instead. Let's look inside. Come on, mustache. Let's go. So it's got an automatic light that turns on as you open it. Here is the full length mirror. Lots of stuff going on inside the wardrobe. We've got an extra pillow and blanket if you need it. You have a number of, cur uh, co what are those called? Why can't, co-hangers. <laughs> Nothing to do with curtains. Um, you've got some valet services for if you want laundering services. This is a business hotel, so you're gonna see a couple of touches that you wouldn't notice at hotels that aren't convention hotels. There is an ironing board, and right here is an accompanying steam, accompanying steam iron. We have a luggage rack, and of course, a programmable safe as well as a solid cubby space under here too. And then you're out of the hallway and into the room proper, which again is big. This is a lot of space. This is a 375 square foot hotel room. So that's gonna be larger than any other moderate resort hotel room. And it's larger than even some deluxe resort hotel rooms. Now this is definitely bigger than the room I stayed in at Wilderness Lodge. Now the rooms in the tower are larger than the rooms in the villages, the other rooms. So the rooms in the tower are gonna average about 375 square feet, whereas the rooms out in the villagers are gonna average about 314 square feet. As you can see, I am in a room with two queen beds. There are some rooms with king beds as well, but most standard rooms accommodate up to four guests, like this one. There are lots of different room types and views, and I will list them all when we talk about pricing in a little bit. The seating in this room, there is this large bench, which is a good spot for luggage as well, and this really nice desk chair. Both of these are like actual, they feel like real leather. I doubt they're real leather, but they're very nice faux leather with like, you, feel, you hear that? It's like embossed. I don't know if that's the right word for that, but I think it's embossed. Very pretty chairs. Here you got your little coffee station and there is a Keurig here. So this is one of the nicer coffee machines, your coffee supplies, as well as an ice bucket. Directly below there is this large cabinet. Hello. And you open that up and you got your mini fridge. Yes, where you put your leftovers. I can't open it. Okay, I did it. Everyone calm down. I got into the mini fridge. Sometimes I like to do a little work when I'm on my resort tour. So I am very fond of this huge desk space, desk dresser double space. It's a lot of desk space. I'm a, I like a big desk. I like to be able to spread out, stretch, not on the desk, but you know what I mean. Um, so this is great for me if I want to do some work. Of course, this is another thing that comes from this being a convention hotel is people work here. Another thing to notice is that Grand Destino Tower actually has pretty special TVs. They are so special because you can cast to these TVs. I can't even tell you how excited I am to be able to cast to this TV because I always wanna watch Disney Plus and I always end up having to watch weird game shows on cable, which I also love, but I can cast. I can cast. I can watch Jungle Cruise, which I watched yesterday, but I'll watch it again. You got this nice little seating area in the corner with this big orange chair and check this out, this thing's swivelly. Oh yeah. This is like one of those evil villain chairs, like, hold on, now I have to do it, hold on. I've been expecting you. I super dig this accent wall that's in here. It's that kind of like Spanish design on it. There are hidden Mickeys in the wallpaper. I absolutely love that. There's also some pretty great lighting in here. It's all very clean um, and matches sort of the aesthetic of the room in general, but it gives a nice warm light. It's not harsh in here. Let's talk curtains, which I get confused by, but I'm not gonna this time. We've got blackout curtains with these pretty red marks on it. We've got privacy curtains, and then we've got no curtains, just a view. And this view is pretty crazy. So this is a standard view. As you can tell, I'm looking at a whole lot of parking lot. But you know what else I can see? The bus stop. Just kidding, that's the Magical Express stop. 
but I can see people watching. I can see over there, Spaceship Earth. I can see the Swan and Dolphin. I can see the Swan Reserve, the new hotel. Keep going, and I can see Tower of Terror across Hollywood Studios. I can see the top spires of Galaxy's Edge. Crazy, I can see all the way to space. And then there are some little spindles out there in the distance that I'm pretty sure are Blizzard Beach. Anyway, it's an amazing view, and the best part, I think we're gonna be able to see Epcot's fireworks from here. So we're definitely gonna try to watch those tonight when they start at 9 p.m. Epcot forever. Like I said, you got two queen beds, four pillows each, and there's a Mickey towels on the bed, which I actually haven't seen this in any of my recent resort tours, and this was my favorite thing when I was a kid. Mickey towels, towels in the shape of little animals. I used to try to keep them in shape when I was a kid, so I love that that's there. That put a smile on my face as soon as I walked in here. The headboards have this lovely wood design to them. They've got the ambient lights over top and kind of a plush so you don't hit your head on that bumpy wood design. And the beds look super comfy. You know that we'll be testing those out momentarily. There are these little reading lights that turn on automatically when you pop them out. Great for if you're sharing a room with someone who wants to go to bed earlier than you. Our middle console here has another light and this one has the bell motifs in it that you'll see a lot all over Grand Estino because that is kind of a, a dolly motif. There's lots of outlets in this room. Since this uh, tower was built in 2019 or opened in 2019, there are outlets everywhere because that's the technology age, baby. Time to plug in all your devices. This little side table is uh, more drawer space, which is great. And you've got a top drawer with your take-along guide to the magic. And the other drawers are empty, but plenty of storage space here, as well as your resort phone for anything you might need. These drawers right here are pretty sizable. This is definitely where you'd want to unpack if you were hanging out for a long time. There are three of them, all the same size. Great amount of storage space. Speaking of storage space, lots of underbed space in here. This is pretty typical of all of the new and refurbished hotel rooms is underbed space, but I mean plenty of space for you to store your bags in this room. Also, just one more time, I want to note how much space there is between the beds and in the walking areas of this room. So much room for activities. I could do a cartwheel in here, except I can't do a cartwheel, so I can't. There is a fancy thermostat in this room, which I have set on 70 because I'm very cold. And this is my favorite design detail in the room, actually, is this mirror. It's this like golden edged mirror with this beautiful Spanish border on it. So I really love that mirror. I think it's gorgeous. Not super practical where it is, but I'll, I'll let it slide. I'll let it slide for, for good style. You probably noticed there are not a ton of Disney touches in here. This is a convention center hotel. It was built with primarily in mind hosting conventions, hosting business folks. And the whole hotel does have a little bit more of an adult vibe than some of the other hotels. Still, I love this hotel room. It's absolutely gorgeous in here. And this is one of my favorites I've toured, so. But I'm an adult and your kids might not feel the same way. Let's head into this glorious bathroom. So first thing, you got this huge vanity mirror. It goes all the way to the ceiling. Lots of lighting. Actually, really great lighting in here. Um, I'm noticing a lot of toiletries. This is more toiletries than I even saw at Wilderness Lodge. There is a shower cap, cooling aloe gel. Oh my gosh, aloe? Do you know how much I sunburn? This is amazing. Wow, okay, cooling aloe gel, I'm taking that definitely. Body lotion, mouthwash, a vanity kit, and facial soap are all out here. And then in the shower you have those refillable soaps. Two pretty sizable sinks with a good amount of vanity space, not a ton, but enough for some makeup and things like that. You've got some under sink storage space as well. Some extra towels. And this side has a hair dryer as well as extra toilet paper and tissue if you need it. The best type of mirror. Hello. <laughs> the shower is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, this was the first time that caught my eye when I walked into this room. It's a standing shower. It is a glass wall, so you're definitely gonna wanna close that sliding door if you're traveling with companions, which could be a little bit of an inconvenience if someone needs to use the sink or the toilet while someone is showering. Um, Glass door opens towards you. You've got those refillable soaps I mentioned, a ledge for anything you might need, this nice tile detail, and then two shower heads, a like pointer one, whatever those are called, and a waterfall big broad shower head, which I turned on and you can see right now. 
Wasn't that amazing? And then across the bathroom, you can head into the commode room, which is where you'll find all the towels, very many towels, and the commode itself, of course, as well as this art, which matches a lot of the art in the hallways and has this lady looking at you while you do your business, which is a little weird, but I'll accept it. This room has a door of its own as well. It is a sliding door and it does lock. Both of these doors lock actually. Hello, this is Salvador Dali from the future. Quincy earlier made a, a grave error and forgot to do bed science. So I'm doing it now. <clears throat> oh yeah, bed science. It's comfy bed. Um, feels pretty good. I, I, you know what, honestly, I think my bed science needs work because how I, I'm having trouble distinguishing if there is any difference between the different mattresses, queen bed mattresses in Disney World hotel rooms, but this one feels comfy. I feel supported. I feel like I'm on a moderate mix between cushy and firm and best part, you know, we can't forget it. Oh, head sink. Look at the head sinkage, like a solid four inches of head sink into these beautiful fluffy Disney pillows. Best part of staying at a Disney resort. So now that we've seen the whole room, we've gotten acquainted with it. Let's talk about pricing a little bit. So pricing in Coronado Springs ranges widely because there are a lot of different room types. In the villages, which we'll see as we go around, your pricing is gonna range from $230 to around $460. Now that range is so wide because the room rates change based on date and because I'm including a couple of different views in there. Some of those are water views, some of those are preferred room locations, things like that. The regular tower rooms are going to range from $280 to around $565, varying based on date and view. The um, club access rooms here are going to be $395 to around $865. And then you're getting into suites territory. So the deluxe suites in the tower are $645 to $1,220. The Casitas one bedroom suites are going to be $990 to $1,450. All these are approximate. And then going up from there, you've got the higher level suites. So those are the tower bedroom suites, the executive suites in Casitas, and the presidential suite in the tower, which all of those together range from around $1,185 per night to $3,245 per night approximately, depending on date and level of room. So very wide range of room prices here, but a lot of those rooms are moderate, moderately priced, very reasonable. Here in this room that I'm staying in, this is a standard room. I'm paying around less than $300 to stay in here. And honestly, the amenities and this room feel a little bit like a deluxe. So if that puts that into context for you, deluxes are typically double that, maybe a little bit less, but it's, I mean, kind of a steal. But enough about the room. I think we should explore the rest of the hotel, don't you? All right, so I'm back in this gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous lobby. Again, this is one of my favorite newer lobbies in Disney World. I, of course, love some of the older ones like Polynesian and things like that more, but I mean, wow. When you compare this with even places like Riviera, which is supposed to be a much higher end hotel than this, this is stunning. Plenty of seating in the lobby, both to relax and work. These desks all through here have outlets and things like that. USB ports for if you need to charge anything while you're working. So since this is a convention center hotel, there is obviously a ridiculous amount of meeting space over in the convention center, but there's actually some here as well. A couple of these hallways, you'll see that there are notes to boardrooms. Grand Estino Tower features the Catalonia boardroom, the Lantana room, and this huge patio outside, which can all serve as meeting spaces for businesses. That looks like the lady in our bathroom. There's a lot of the art in the hallways and has this lady looking at you while you do your business. As I mentioned, this resort is inspired by the works of Salvador Dali, which I think you can tell in the architecture and in the art that's through here. And more specifically, it's actually inspired by Salvador Dali's film that he did as a collaboration with Walt Disney called Destino. Get it? Grand Destino. And this lower level of the lobby is an absolutely gorgeous, very relaxing space. And it is also home to Barcelona Lounge, which is actually where we're gonna go for breakfast. But this is, as you can see, an absolutely gorgeous lounge. There's a beautiful chandelier and this beautiful stained glass wall in the back. 
And the whole theme of this lounge is Spanish coffee culture. So during normal times and traditionally, Barcelona Lounge has had coffee service in the morning and cocktail service in the afternoon. Right now it's been closing at 12 p.m. So it's just been sticking to that coffee service. We'll be sure to stop by when it's open tomorrow because I would love to have some Spanish coffee as I'm sure you can imagine. And here's the fitness center. It's over by the fancy elevators, TM. And this is interesting because this is one of two fitness centers at this resort, state-of-the-art equipment in there. And what's crazy is that this was the first moderate resort to even offer a fitness center. And it has two. How wild is that? When you do arrive, you can drop your items with bell services. If your room isn't ready, or if you're checking out before you're actually leaving, you can drop your items with bell services then as well. We are real quick gonna stroll on over to the bus stop because Coronado Springs only has bus transportation, which is a pretty big minus. So if you aren't driving or using a ride share, your only option to get around Disney World is to take a bus from Coronado Springs. There are four different bus stops around the resort. And this is the biggest one. It's right at the very front. It services the tower. So we are going to take the bus in the morning and see how it goes. Just outside of the lobby is Grand Destino Plaza, which is a 12,000 square foot patio space. And there's seating, there's giant chess, giant checkers. It is so pretty out here, especially now that it's not quite as hot as it was when I first got here. And there's a resort map. So let me take you through a little bit of how this resort is laid out, because again, it's huge. So we are right here up at Grand Destino Tower. Our room looks out this way. And as you can see, the next area is El Centro, which is the old lobby area. You've got the convention center. Then you move into the villages of Casitas, Ranchos, and Cabanas. And then in the middle, of course, you have the dig site, which is the feature pool. Very cool, I can't wait to go there. And this is Three Bridges, which is a restaurant located at the center of Three Bridges. So that's pretty neat. There's a running trail, of course, that goes all the way around Lago Dorado. It's about a mile long. Speaking of Lago Dorado. That is the lake that this resort is centered around. It's 15 acres. It's huge. It's gorgeous. It means a lot of the rooms have water views and there's that beautiful restaurant right in the middle. I love these wind sculptures. It is, as you can see, not really windy right now, but they're cool whether it's windy or not. Also, I'm a plants nerd and look at these beautiful, I think these are birds of paradise. Look at how pretty those flowers are. So Grand Estino Tower is connected to El Centro by this covered causeway, but you can also walk outside. Depends on how you're feeling. I'm outside, it's nice right now. And the ever important recreation board. Lots of stuff going on, arts and crafts. Colors of Coronado painting experience, are you kidding? <gasps> what? It's only Friday afternoon, so that's not the day I'm here and movies under the stars, marina rentals, and things like that. Nature walk, fitness centers, lots of recreation. So situated right outside of Grand Destino Tower, you can also find the marina, which operates seasonally. It is operating right now, although it's closing up for the day. This is a spot where typically you can rent kayaks, pedal boats, and electric boat rentals and things like that. Right now though, that's not an offering due to COVID-19, but you can get bicycles and fishing poles if that's something you'd be interested in grabbing. Here you can see where we kind of transitioned from the Grand Spanish Hotel into a more blended Spanish theme with Mexican influences and things like that as we enter the older area. So right here on the water is Laguna Bar, which is technically a pool bar, I think by Disney's designation, but it's not by a pool, so it's kind of a misnomer. But this is a tequila and mezcal bar, and it is right on the water, it is very beautiful. It's closed up right now, but they are advertising Laguna Nights with live entertainment and daily specials, which is pretty neat. All right, now we're heading into the old lobby building, which is El Centro. And this used to be where you would enter when you visited Coronado Springs. And you would come up to this grand welcoming fountain with the pineapple, sign of welcome. And the real stunner is this dome ceiling covered in doves up here. How gorgeous is that? Don't forget to look up. This space used to be where the old front desk was under those archways. And they are no longer front desks because the front desks are in Grand Estino Tower. So instead, this is kind of a big space where you can sit and hang out or knock some workout on these tables that have plenty of outlets and things like that. 
and just sit in a really nice space so close to the water. This resort is full of places where you could get some work done or hang out or read a book, which I absolutely love for a resort day. Grand Estino also doesn't have the merchandise location. That's over here in El Centro and it is Panchitos, named for Panchito of Trix Caballeros fame. And there is a lot of really great stuff in here. You've got Coronado Springs specific merchandise, which has that beautiful Spanish flair. Lots to look at, even some glassware and things like that. And this is a pretty sizable resort store. It's not the biggest, it's not the smallest. You've got a bunch of general Disney merchandise, of course, um, plus some Mexican merchandise, which means Coco merch. So you know I am very into that. I love it. Anytime I get to see Dante and Miguel and the whole gang. So that's a plus. I want this puzzle so badly. There's also some food and drinks and things like that for you to stock up in your room. Some ice cream too. Nice. I love access to ice cream. So even kitchenware, it's a pretty sizable merchandise store. Again, not the biggest and it is the only store on this resort's property, but lots of options. Another thing that's unique about this store is that you might find some Indian and Mexican handmade works as well, like these friendship bracelets. All right, continuing on. The first spot we're gonna pass is Cafe Rick's Bakery, which is open daily right now, 7 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. And that's a quick service option for like a quick snack or lunch. They actually have a gelato station and an above par bakery case. So pretty good option to grab a quick snack. Then we head into this pretty grand space where there are two main restaurants. So this is Rick's Sports Bar and Grill, which is probably the most like straight up sports bar that you'll find, especially one that's owned by Disney in Disney World. It's a more upscale sports bar. They have 31 TVs though. So you will definitely get to catch the big game. I even see some like really big <laughs> screens in there. This would have been a great place to watch the Olympics. And they're known for draft beers. They also have a fan favorite option called Wachos which are waffle fry nachos. And if I wasn't super excited to eat what I'm eating later, that would sound delicious. Then immediately behind me, you have the food court option. So as you can tell, lots of dining options here. There are actually 10 in total counting the two pool bars. So tons of dining options. El Mercado de Coronado is supposed to give you the feel of dining outside in like a Mexican marketplace. And they've got a bunch of classic food core options like chicken and burgers and things like that, but they've also got some Mexican favorites as well, like rice bowls. And just past El Mercado de Coronado is Maya Grill, which is a table service with Nueva Latino cuisine, so new Latin cuisine, when they're known for handcrafted cocktails and an expansive menu with things like empanadas, fajita skillets, tacos, and more. And they've got that really fun torch lighting in there, plus some more Mayan details and things like that. Now, because this resort does have so many dining options, the hours remain a little bit wonky just with the whole global health crisis still sort of having its effect. So make sure you check out those hours if you're hoping to dine somewhere. The big area with all this dining is also where you can connect to the convention center, which we are going to stroll into and take a, look, a little look at. So the convention center is huge. It is 60,000 square feet. It's got ballrooms and meeting spaces and beautiful, pieces of Mexican art and things like that. And it's always empty because <laughs> I'm never here when there's a convention. And it's kind of eerie that you can just stroll around this huge empty space. But I do recommend it if you're just going for a stroll. One, it's a great way to get around the resort in a little bit more air conditioning because the convention center goes all the way over almost to Casitas. And you can also check out some of the textiles and things that are framed on the wall. I know you probably can't hear it, but they are playing um, Un Poco Loco and it's just part of the ambiance music here, which I absolutely love. The other thing is that the convention center actually features both an express business center and a full service business center. The express business center is open 24 seven and has computers for your use, printer, recycling bin, airplane departures, that's helpful. And I guess lockers, I don't know what these are. Oh my gosh, it's package pickup. Yeah, so Business Hotel has a lot of benefits. Here's where you'll find that full service business center if you do happen to need it. It closes at five, nine to five, Monday through Friday, standard business hours. And we are continuing on 
up these stairs to Casitas. And once you get out of the convention center, you'll find yourself in Casitas, which is the first of the three villages of the non-tower rooms. Casitas does mean little houses. Um, so these are typically used for convention accommodations. They're supposed to represent urban centers like Santa Fe or Monterey. And you can see that in the architecture styles and things like that. So something that's really cool about this resort is depending on where you stay, you'll be seeing different sort of architectural motifs. As you can see, the rooms in the villages do open up to open air hallways. And these rooms do have a little bit more feel of a moderate, whereas in the tower you're thinking, should I be a deluxe for something that's nice? But these rooms do feel a little more moderate. Still, some pretty gorgeous, very well-themed spaces in here with some beautiful wildlife. It's kind of worth meandering at this resort. There's a lot to see, a lot to take in, and a lot of beautiful work has gone into the buildings and the foliage around them. So if you're looking for a nice stroll when you're staying here, you don't have to go far. There's even a nature walk. I've never even seen a lot of these water features, but there are so many beautiful little hidden details. Not even details, like hidden water features at this resort. So in addition to the big main dig site pool, each of the three villages has its own quiet pool. So if you're looking for a quick dip that isn't as hectic as it might be over with the Mayan Pyramid, then you've got options for that. And here is the second health club at this resort. So this, since it's not in the tower, was actually the first ever moderate fitness center, La Vida Massage Salon and Fitness. It came in to probably help service those convention center guests. And it's actually got a lot of options, as you can probably tell from the fact that it says them on the sign. The gym itself features gym equipment. You can also find a sauna, manicures, pedicures, facials, massage services, tanning facilities, and personal training assistance. And then the salon has hairstyling, permanence, coloring, spoilings, makeup, nail services, and facials. So there's a lot, a lot of services available here. So now, instead of taking the mile long walk around the lake, I think we should probably hop on the internal shuttle. So like other resorts that have internal bus stops like this one, there is an internal shuttle to help you get around if mobility is an issue or you just don't want to walk half a mile to get from your room to the lobby. So we're going to head over to the Casitas bus stop and we're going to take it past Ranchos and over to Cabanas where I'll tell you a little bit more about those. Now Coronado Springs doesn't have as many internal stops as some other resorts like Caribbean Beach, the bus to nowhere. There are four bus stops at Coronado Springs, one at each of the villages and that one that I showed you earlier at Grand Destino. And every time a bus comes to go to the parks, Disney Springs, or anywhere else that a bus might be going, it's going to stop at all four of those bus stops, which can make travel times a little bit longer. Factor in the fact that this resort is not the closest to any of the parks, and you're looking at, on average, some longer travel times, which isn't the best in the world. But with only four stops, it's not the worst either. We are currently stopped at Ranchos, which are two and three story Pueblo style villas that reflect more arid and rural regions with more of a rustic ranch setting. They're super pretty, um, but that is village two, the furthest one from Grand Destino Tower and the lobby. over at Cabanas. It only took, it's 629, it took about four minutes for us to go around from two of the stops with a little bit of waiting time at each one. Keep in mind you can hop on any bus if you are headed clockwise. Um, if you're headed not clockwise then you need to hop on the internal shuttle to get around but if you're headed clockwise you can hop on any bus. That was an Animal Kingdom bus I just hopped on and I got here to Cabanas no issue. But it will add probably eight to ten minutes to your travel times with those four internal stops. So just keep that in mind if you have built in, you know, an hour or so to get to the parks, you should be fine. But if you're pushing it, you might end up with a little bit of extra time tacked on at the beginning or end of your park day traveling on those internal bus stop routes. All right, so this last village is Cabanas or Cabanas. I feel like it's Cabanas. And that is buildings that are supposed to reflect the beauty and serenity of Mexico's coastal regions. And they do feel very beautiful and serene. And the best part about Cabanas is that this village has a sand beach. This little strip of beach here with hammocks and lounge chairs and things like that. There is serene Mexican music playing. 
It was very relaxing. So, of course, you don't have to be staying in Cabanas to use this beach. It's pretty close to Grand Decino Tower as well. And you could always take that internal shuttle to get around if you wanted to have a little lounge. But we don't have time for lounging. There's a very cool pool for us to see. So let's go. All right, so we are headed up into the dig site at the lost city of Cibola, which would be the main feature pool here. It's themed after, of course, kind of an archeological dig at a Mayan ruins. And it's a huge pool area. This is a map just of the pool area, which is wild. Let's go take a look around. So of course, you've got the lost city of Cibola pool in here which is the big feature pool. And also over here, you'll spot sort of the kitty splash pad area, which is a necessity for many families. One of the more exciting features of this pool is the spitting jaguar slide, which you can see tucked in the trees up there. He spits on those folks riding down the slide, which isn't very polite, but I think jaguars are cute, so I'll let it slide. Let it slide. Depends on the evening, but you might catch a fire at the Explorer's Fire Pit. Tons of deck seating at this pool as well. That Mayan Pyramid is the feature and it is a whopping 46 feet tall. It is huge and so cool. I actually liked this pool best when I was a little kid because of that Mayan Pyramid and that spinning Jaguar slide. Coronado Springs also has the largest hot tub on property. It fits 22 people. It's a lot of people in a hot tub and more than any other hot tub anywhere in Disney World. Over on the other side of the dig site, you'll find a sand volleyball court. And something really cool that you'll know is that they have that Mayan ring on the wall from that ball that they used to play, um, from that game that they used to play. You can see that in Road to El Dorado, which is not a Disney movie, but a good movie nonetheless. You can also find Siesta's Cantina, which is a pool bar that does actually have more robust food selections. They have full entrees here. So if you're spending the whole day at the pool, Siestas has got you covered. And we are not done yet. There are ping pong tables and the Iguana Arcade. So this is where you can find this resort's arcade. And finally, there's the very cool Explorers Playground. All right, here you can see Isle de Largo, which is the platform that holds three bridges, which is where we are going for dinner. But first, we're gonna head back into the tower and up to that very top floor. All right, we're back in Grand Destino Tower, the fancy elevators and fancy mirror, hey. And we are going up to the 16th floor, the very top. So there are two things on the 16th floor. There is a full service restaurant, Toledo Tapas Steak and Seafood, and Dahlia Lounge. But I wanna talk about Toledo first. So Toledo is not a signature restaurant, but in my opinion, it feels signature. It's got two olive trees in the restaurant, a ceiling that can change color coordinated with the outside of the bar or the outside of the building, as well as an amazing menu. Their main shtick is small plates and house boards. And a lot of those things are plated charcuterie and cheese, especially on stage in that tapas kitchen in the very back. 80% of the wine vintages on the extensive wine list are from Spain. There are amazing floor to ceiling windows that offer views of all of Walt Disney World. We'll take a look at the view in just a second. And Molly and I had a really lovely dinner here together just the other night. My favorite things I ate were probably the uh, flight of four pinchos, uh, which was amazing. There was an oyster like crostini pinchos that was so good. And then we also had an, the amazing progressive tapas bar dessert is just like the richest chocolate bar you ever did see. So that was really good too. Toledo did just reopen and is only open some nights, which is another reason to check out those dining hours before you get dead set on a place to eat for dinner. But we are headed to Dahlia Lounge. So Dahlia Lounge is one of my favorite lounges just in all of Disney World. It is gorgeous. So it is themed to the Dahlia, which is a very common motif in Salvador Dali's paintings. You can see it in the light fixtures and things in here. My favorite part of this lounge is this absolutely lovely wall of photos of Salvador Dali and Walt with Salvador Dali. Look, that guy and I have the same mustache. What a coincidence. And the other best part is that you can walk out on the patio here for, in my opinion, what might be the second best view in all of Disney World second maybe to California Grill and I'm not even sure about that. Let's take a look around. So from up here you can see all of Epcot pretty much. The Swan and Dolphin Hotel, the Swan Reserve Hotel. You can see the Skyliner way out there. 
you can see Tower of Terror and all of Hollywood Studios. That's all that right there. Still going. I don't even know what I'm looking at really. Over here is Blizzard Beach. And then even further, you've got Animal Kingdom. And out the windows of Toledo, you can actually see Magic Kingdom as well. So it really shows that Coronado Springs is just smack dab in the middle of everything. I can even see way over there in the distance, Disney Springs. So, I mean, can you beat this? <laughs> Think of the fireworks that you're going to be able to see from Epcot up here. Or from our room! Dolly Lounge serves up a menu of small plates and craft cocktails. We are going to get a pretty famous cocktail here and give it a review, as well as a small plate. But I'm not sure what yet. So you can just step in and grab an available seat at Dahlia Lounge if there are available seats. There were plenty here on this Monday evening. They've got QR code menus right now like many other locations do across Disney World. And we can take a look at all of those different options. Decide what we want to grab. So there are a lot of amazing drinks here, but I went for the Grand Gin Tonic, which is the signature drink here. And it is made with Tanqueray Gin, house-made saffron orange tonic, and soda water. And that rosemary sprig, of course, and it is absolutely beautiful. Let's see if it tastes as good as it looks. Mm, it's really good. You can definitely taste the gin a lot. So if you're not a gin person, I'd maybe go for one of the other awesome cocktails on this menu. But I am a gin person. I like that kind of like woody flavor to it. The rosemary goes so well with it. Mm, I'm a fan. I would get this again. I think that it's got... It's, it's got, you can taste the alcohol, but it's not like it's like overwhelming or anything like that. So it's a nice, it's not too sweet, but it's still not an aggressive drink. So it's good for someone who's looking for something in the middle. All right, and my tapas arrived, which are these beautiful little croquettes with this also beautiful jalapeno cilantro pistu. So I'm very excited. Those look so good and I'm so hungry for my resort touring. I'm so excited. And I bet they'll go great with my beautiful glass. I'm gonna try the croquette with no pistu. Is that how you say that? Pistu? I'm gonna try it plain first. I do not need to get attached to more Disney food. But here I am getting attached. I was expecting something like a hush puppy. I'm from the South. I expect hush puppies in all things. Um, and this looks hush puppy esque, but it tastes a lot like cleaner and lighter than a hush puppy. Um, I literally want to put this whole thing in my mouth, but I need to finish talking to you guys. Um, it tastes like it's it's more like vegetable focused, which I suppose it is, um, but it is still fried. It still has that beautiful crispy exterior, and texturally, the inside is soft and so so hot and warm, and the outside is like beautifully crisp. Oh, it's so good. I can eat maybe a hundred of these in a sitting. Let's try it with the jalapeno cilantro sauce we got. I got a lot to make sure there's no confusion. That was like an explosion of flavor in my mouth. So the first thing you taste is the cilantro. If you don't like cilantro, just skip the sauce. But if you like cilantro, if you like jalapeno, go for it because the first flavor I tasted was the cilantro. That was the first flavor explosion. And then, the jalapeno hit shortly later. It was like a progressive experience. These are very good. There are only four. I would honestly say that these might not be shareable because they are very, very tasty and there's not that many of them. So if you're here with a couple of people, unless you're getting a lot of plates, maybe you don't opt to share the croquettes. All right, I am done at Dahlia Lounge. It was a delightful experience. And now here's the plan. So it's well, it's not quite 8.30 and I have a feeling that we're gonna be able to see Epcot forever from our room. So, I think I'm gonna go back down to our room, kill some time, and then we can go to dinner afterwards, since tonight Three Bridges is open until 12, midnight. So, let's go see if we can catch some fireworks. All right, I am back in my room, and I have to wait for 40 minutes until fireworks happen, but you sure don't, through the power of movie magic. So, ready, time travel, Ooh. This hotel room bottoms out at under $300 per night, and I could just see fireworks from both Epcot and Disney's Hollywood Studios at the same time. Theme park view, fireworks view for under $300, that's unheard of at any other hotel. That was wild. Everything is wild. <laughs>
All right, fireworks have been seen. I freaked out about them a little bit. And now I get to finally go have dinner very late, but it's vacation. When you're on a staycation, you eat dinner at weird times. That's just the rules. In case you're worried, this resort is super pretty at night too. Walking down this bridge at night makes me feel like I'm heading somewhere important. And I am, to dinner, too late. <laughs> All right, so, Three Bridges Bar and Grill at Villa del Lago is a table service directly on the water, possibly more on the water than any other Disney restaurant because it is literally built on a platform in the middle of the lake. And it's an open air casual restaurant that has upscale Spanish inspired bar food, as well as some like sherbet plates and burgers, plus specialty cocktails, and of course, sangria, which is kind of the main event here. All right, so there was about a 10 minute wait. I got my name on the wait list with the cast member. I'm gonna need a text when my table's ready, so now just to hang out and enjoy the serene Florida night air and pretend I'm in Mexico or Spain or wherever I wanna be. So while we wait for our table, let's take a little nighttime stroll and talk about is this resort worth it for you? So of course, like all other Disney resorts, this one does come with the Disney perks. So that's free transportation in the form of buses, free parking at the theme parks, airport transportation for the rest of 2021, early theme park entry and extended hours coming later this year, and a little bit of a bump to the advanced dining reservations window. And at some point, the Disney dining plan will return. So a good number of perks come in, and that's always something to consider if you're looking into any of those. Pros wise, you're looking at amazing food options. There's 10 in total, a pretty awesome pool and your kids might love that pool even when the rest of the resort isn't totally geared towards them. Um, a ton of amenities and the tower feels like it's a deluxe resort hotel for moderate prices. And that's a pretty crazy pro. Cons wise, this resort is super spread out. You could end up in a room that is a good solid half a mile away from the lobby. It does feel more adult in general, so it's not as fun for kids as somewhere like Art of Animation might be. You're limited to just bus transportation and those transportation times can be long, both based on distance and those internal stops. And this spot could get busy if there's a convention here. So those are all things to keep in mind. Overall, if you're looking for a resort that has a ton of amenities, Coronado Springs might be right for you. If the amenities don't matter as much to you, you're gonna spend all your time in the parks, maybe save a couple hundred bucks and go for a value resort hotel for your stay. Or if you're looking for something that your kids are really going to love, maybe opt for one of those more kid-friendly hotels than Coronado Springs. Still, I've had a wonderful time here as an adult. This hotel totally wows, especially here at Grand Estino Tower. Oh, and just like that, it's time for dinner. I am seated in a beautiful spot, so close to the water. It's crazy and gonna have a nice dinner, I think. Let's take a look at the menu. Like other spots, Three Bridges does have that QR code menu again. We can take a look at some of the options. Hmm. Ooh. <gasps> Plot twist. They have what I wanted and I didn't think they did. All right, so I am starting with the roasted corn dip, which is roasted corn, smoked tomato aioli, parmesan, tagine, and tortilla chips, but it's all plant-based. So I'm very curious to see how it tastes. All right, plant-based corn dip, fake cheese. Let's see how it goes. Cool. I'm a fan of this. It's primarily corn. So if you like corn, you're gonna like this dip, whether you're plant-based or not. The Parmesan cheese tastes surprisingly like real Parmesan cheese, despite the fact that it's plant-based. I would not say it has a kick to it, but it does have a very nice smokiness that's really good. Um, I can definitely taste that the corn is char-grilled. This is a very light appetizer. It's pretty sizable, so it's plenty to share, but I don't think I'm gonna have trouble finishing it on my own either, so I'm a fan of this. Tortilla, tortilla chip-wise, we have purple and regular, and they're both very good. They're a step down from like fresh, hot, straight out of the fryer tortilla chips, but right amount of crunch, right amount of flavor, good tortilla chips. All right, so I asked my waiter which dish was most popular, and he surprised me and told me it's actually the curry chicken. Uh, so this is the coconut curry chicken with basmati rice, marinated chickpeas, and cashews which sounds amazing to me, but it seems a little bit more adventurous than typically the most popular dishes are. So it must be really good. Let's find out. All right, moment of truth. That is aggressive curry flavor. 
like a lot more flavorful than I expect as the baseline at a Disney restaurant. I mean, it really packs a punch with curry flavor. If you like a curry, this is a very good chicken curry dish. I'm surprised, honestly, especially because I wouldn't think of a curry as something. I guess you can get curries. Curries are common in Spain. Anyway, I'm surprised. The chicken is very well cooked. It's not dry at all. Try some of the rice. The rice is well cooked as well. So are the chickpeas and the cashews. Um, there's honestly a little bit of heat to this that's surprising and really pleasant. But it's not super overwhelming if you can't... Well, if you can't do spicy at all, probably not the dish for you. But if you're okay with just a baby bit of spice, this might be okay. Okay, you know I gotta try the naan. I love a good... Is this naan? I don't know. It's good bread though. If you are looking for something more adventurous, this could be a great meal. If not, Three Bridges also has an amazing burger. It has an amazing steak and fries dish. There are poke bowls here, which is another adventurous option. So I think that the menu here could probably please anybody. So I'm pretty happy with my curry chicken though. Delicious dinner had, leftovers in tow and I'm tired. I think it's time to go to sleep. We have an early start tomorrow, so I must say goodnight. Folks, time for extended bed science. Peace out. See you on the flip side tomorrow morning. We're rope dropping Magic Kingdom, baby. Good night. Good morning. It's a brand new day. We're headed to Magic Kingdom. Gonna check out those travel times, but first, coffee at Barcelona Lounge. I am so excited. Let's go. So checkout is at 11 a.m. at Disney World Resort Hotels. You can request a late checkout, a late checkout of 12 p.m., but it's not guaranteed. So most likely you're just going to need to be checked out of your room by 11 a.m. If that is, if like you're leaving before that and you need to drop your bags, you can of course leave them with Bell Services. I'm obviously headed out today. So if I had bags, that's what I would be doing. Quick jaunt down and we are back at Barcelona Lounge in this lobby that has beautiful morning light streaming in. All right, so again, Barcelona Lounge is coffee culture inspired. So you'll notice my coffee is more European. It does not fill the cup. And that's because this is a more traditional cortado than a lot of the items you'll find around Disney World. So cortado is a Spanish coffee that's just espresso and a dash of steamed milk. And with good quality espresso, which I'm hoping this is, it's very, very good. And then I also just got a blueberry muffin because what better way to have coffee than with a blueberry muffin? Cortado first. Cheers. It's good. They have good espresso here. Um, drinks like this, Spanish coffees, are not for like those that don't like coffee. If you typically get like a super sweet Starbucks latte, this is going to catch you off guard a little bit. Look at this beautiful blueberry on this side. Holy moly, that is good. I'm throwing it on myself, but it is moist. It's got those, whatever they crumble on top of blueberry muffins is so good. It's got those on top, huge clusters of blueberries. I mean, just massive. Part of me was kind of expecting like a prepackaged gas station muffin for some reason, but I don't know why, because this is much better than that, obviously. Very much like a Disney bakery muffin. If you're just looking for a light breakfast to hold you over until like an 11 a.m., 10.30 a.m. lunch in the parks, then Barcelona Lounge might be your go-to spot. Or if you just like having a pastry for breakfast and not eggs, that's fine too. All right, I have my coffee, but I wanted to, on the way to the bus stop, tell you how my sleeping went. And it went well. I was kind of thinking as I was falling asleep that the bed wasn't super comfy, like it was a little too firm. However, I rested very well and I woke up like without a single crick in my neck, which doesn't even happen to me at home. So maybe I was just being picky and the bed knew what was best for me. All right, there's an Animal Kingdom bus here. Animal Kingdom opened at 8 a.m. today, or opens at 8 a.m. But we are gonna try to rope drop Magic Kingdom. So we gotta wait for a Magic Kingdom bus. So since this resort has uh, four internal stops, the whole resort does not have to come to one bus stop, which means it's actually relatively empty up here. I will say though, pretty much a whole load of people just got on an Animal Kingdom bus, which means that 
that's fewer people who are going to be able to get on to the other stops. Grandestino Tower is the first stop on the bus loop and we get to see how long it's going to take to drive through all four internal stops. All right, just like clockwork, it's actually a little earlier than clockwork. It's 7.58 a.m. and the Magic Kingdom bus is here. That's the first Magic Kingdom bus of the day for the park to open at 9. So in a shocking turn of events, Grand Estino Tower was the first or last bus stop on the internal bus loop. So I didn't actually get to see all the other stops and how long it took, but we can glean from yesterday that it probably took about eight minutes to run through all the stops. I got on the bus at 7.59. I'm standing at the Magic Kingdom bus stop at 8.14. So I would say it was about a 12 to 15 minute ride over here. All right, it is a Tuesday morning rope drop at Magic Kingdom. You actually can head into Main Street USA and then up to the different lands that they rope drop at different times to let folks in. So that's why you'll see that there aren't people waiting here at the gate like you might see at other parks. But that was a super easy bus fueled rope drop to Magic Kingdom. All right, that just about does it for my tour here at Disney's Coronado Springs Resort. I hope you had a great time today. I know I sure did. If you did, go ahead and give this video a like and subscribe to our channel. And let me know in the comments, where do you want to see me go next? You can follow us on social media at All Ears Net. And until next time, I'm Quincy from All Ears, and I'll see you soon. Bye! Want more All Ears videos? Click here. And want to subscribe? You can do that right here. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. Thanks for watching today. We'll see you real soon.